Hi, Jerry Jenkins here talking about all things writing. Today on Writing Devotionals. If you're a person of faith and yourself benefit from reading daily devotionals, you may find yourself eager to help others grow spiritually too. But beware, don't get into writing devotionals unless you're passionate about the task. Just about any reader can see through a piece of writing done only for the sake of the task. Your passion must come through in order to trigger theirs. If you're willing to study the craft and do the hard work required to write short pieces, this video is for you. There are many ways to write devotionals, but most share common principles. My goal here is to show you the most popular and effective methods, as well as suggest proven strategies for coming up with great devotional ideas. Let's start with the basics. Devotionals are short meditations, usually just 150 to 175 words, based on scripture and your own insight. Envision them as worship moments readers can experience whenever they wish. Devotional publishers need a lot of fresh material. More than 25 devotional quarterlies publish 365 new entries each year, year in and year out. Publishers of vacation Bible school and Sunday school materials often include devotionals for teachers and students. Many magazines and e-zines run devotionals in every issue. Some publishing houses produce not only devotional books, but also desk calendars and greeting cards that require even shorter devotional thoughts. All this material must be replenished constantly. Publications can't just recycle the same devotionals they ran last year. Instead, they depend on freelance writers to provide hundreds upon hundreds of original and insightful new ones. So, what makes a good devotional? Your readers are giving you a few minutes of their precious time every day. In exchange, you want to give them an engaging piece of writing that offers fresh insights on eternal truths. Your goal is to be genuine and honest, but never grandiose or admonishing. An engaging devotional writer is saying, in essence, come alongside me for a few minutes. Let's talk. Remember to keep your style appropriate to your audience. Obviously, writing for teens is not the same as writing for seniors, for example. And although your anecdotes and illustrations should be drawn from your life, the principle should always be drawn from Scripture. Your job is to present God's wisdom in a package your reader can relate to. That means you should stick with tangible images, things readers can see, touch, smell, hear, and taste. Be specific, yet precise in your writing. Make each word count. Use visual nouns, punchy verbs, short sentences, and active voice. It's also important to give your reader credit. Resist the urge to suggest an application of the principle you've covered in your devotional. If the shoe fits, your readers will wear it without your pointing a finger in their faces and telling them what to do. So, who reads devotionals? Just about anyone you can think of. Teens, college students, men, women, grandparents, veterans, athletes, teachers, you name it. While many simply want a refreshing spiritual boost to their day, many turn to devotionals to meet deep needs. They may have lost friendships or experienced divorce, lost a job or their home, or suffered the sting of criticism, betrayal, or the death of a dear friend or family member. Others seek intimacy with God. Perhaps their prayer lives are lax, their testimonies weak, or their church attendance sporadic, and they need to find their way back to a vibrant faith they can share with others. Regardless what is going on in their lives, your readers may use your devotional as their only connection to the Bible all day. A harried mom may read one before bed. A busy teacher may read one during lunch. An executive may read one during breakfast. So what do you need to bring to the table to help that happen? First, you need a pure heart. See James 3, verses 8 through 11. With humility, graciousness, and spiritual sensitivity, you might create something that can change a reader's thinking and behavior. Next, you need a focused mind. See Psalm 1, verses 1 through 3, and Psalm 73, verse 28. A powerful devotional message is short, so you must write succinctly. Finally, you must have a burning desire. See Jeremiah 20, verse 9. Pray for guidance to offer the right words to someone who may be reading a devotional published up to a year after you write it. Now, you won't get rich writing devotionals. That's why it's important to take them and write them in batches to make it worth your while. Not that you're doing it solely for the money, of course. You can repurpose your devotionals, revising and reselling your print versions as radio or podcast devotionals for about the same rate of pay. 
You can also collect your devotionals and publish them as a book, receiving an advance in royalties. But as with all inspirational market writing, beyond income, you may also enjoy readers telling you your words changed their minds about something important or came at just the perfect time in their life. It goes without saying that before you can receive that kind of feedback, you have to succeed in getting your devotionals published. I've provided links in the video description that will take you to the submission guidelines for several publications. Here's how to approach the writing itself. When you settle on a passage of scripture as your anchor text, read it in different translations until you thoroughly understand the verse in context. Then keep the lesson current by offering an illustration today's reader can relate to. Here are four of several ways to approach devotionals. The first is self-examination. Draw on personal experiences and use anecdotes that contain valuable lessons. Often such devotionals begin with, when I was in high school, or fishing alone one morning, or during my first year at camp. The self-evident moral or application should tie in with the selected scripture. Second, you could report as an outside observer. Tell something that happened to someone else. Real names may be used with permission or changed if necessary, as long as the story is true. You may start with something like, when my great-grandmother first came to America, or my best friend had just gotten his driver's license, or most people are unaware that George Washington. Third, you can tell a story of interacting with someone. Report on something you learned from a friend co-worker, or family member. Begin with something like, my son taught me a lesson one day when I was taking him to school, or my friend could always make me laugh, or one day my college history professor was explaining, etc. Fourth, you can write an object lesson. In this approach, you'll use a tangible object to parallel an event or circumstance. Jesus liked this format, using everyday items like a mustard seed, a Roman coin, a lamp, a bushel, or a tower as metaphors. Object lesson devotionals allow readers to quickly draw the parallel between the object and the lesson. As an example, trees killed by a saltwater tsunami may still stand upright, but they will bear no fruit, like people who come to church each Sunday but do nothing during the week to share their faith. These are just a few of the most common ways to approach writing devotionals. So, where will you find ideas? Much of what we experience in our daily lives has the potential to become a devotional. Has God ever used a specific verse of Scripture to change your life? How? Has He brought a person into your life to alter your direction, such as a teacher or friend? Have you received a dramatic answer to prayer that proved God was working in your life? Brainstorm sad or funny experiences, things you've learned while traveling, poems or songs that move you, how you felt when you learned about a friend's illness or accident. For more inspiration, check out the link in this video or below in the description. Now, here are a few things to avoid. Although certain publications use devotionals targeted to teens, working women, or seniors, most devotionals you write will be read by a wide audience. So keep in mind that your readers will represent many different financial and social conditions. The distinctive beliefs of many denominations and traditions must be respected. So avoid controversial topics like infant baptism, female ordination, or charismatic gifts unless you're writing for a publication from that specific tradition. Now, when it comes to the actual writing, all devotionals follow the same basic format. Before submitting a devotional, find the publication's writer's guidelines online and also check out the publication itself. Then follow those guidelines exactly. Your name, address, and phone number should appear on each page. Some publications also ask for your email address. The basic format calls for a suggested passage of scripture, usually the shorter the better, a title, one specific verse from the suggested reading, and an anecdote or story that shows how that biblical lesson applies today, again, without your having to spell it out. Some publications ask that you begin or end with a prayer or thought for the day. The writer's byline usually appears at the end. Required lengths vary from as short as 75 words to as long as 225. The guidelines will state the preferred method of submission. Finally, most publications buy first rights, which means you can repurpose your devotionals in books. I hope this video has inspired you to try to give devotionals a chance. If you'd like more inspiration and ideas, head over to How to Write a Devotional. And if you found this video helpful, please like it, Leave a comment, share it, 
and subscribe to my channel. All the best with your writing. I'll see you next time.